Hey everybody, Dear Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Kyoto Wins. We are on Hachiro Iwa's route, and we're at the part where Ito is about to leave us. So let's continue on making the decisions and skipping through pre-read materials. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Here we choose uh, the soldiers. And then someone high-ranking, so we get something new. Maybe it'll be Hijikata. The heads of the Shinsegumi seemed like the best people to ask, but they were all still talking in the common room. Perhaps I should wait a bit until they were done. There's one. Almost as if on cue, Hijikata appeared in the hallway. Oh, hello, Hijikata. Shouldn't you be resting? Oh, I, I feel a lot better now. Your dad's a doctor, and you know a little about medicine, but that doesn't mean you're invulnerable. Go back to your room and try not to run around too much. <laughs> okay, I'll be careful. Treat me like a little kid. Oh, shoot. It was easy to forget one suffered a significant injury when it healed almost completely by morning. I'll go right back to my room, but... Can I ask you something first? What? It's about Ito and the people who are leaving with him. How do you... feel about all that? What do you mean? Well, people who are members of the Shinsengumi... won't be... If I were in Hijikata's shoes, I don't think I could sit still. I'd be so stressed. Well, he deals with stress every day. A lot of it. Either that or I'd blame myself. We were allies yesterday. But if our positions change, we can be enemies tomorrow. That's life. But what about Saito and Heisuke? They had all been captains together. Surely Hijikata saw them as friends, at least. Would Hijikata be able to brand them as enemies... Just because of their change in allegiance? Yep. Saito and Toto. It's going to be rough to lose a pair of skilled swordsmen, yes. But think about the future. If they're leaving, they had some problem with the Shinsengumi. Better they leave now than later, when the problem gets worse. Ah, oh, what a good actor you are. <sighs> How could he be so cold and analytical about his friends? He has to be as a leader. Yet he made sense. If Ito and company were leaving because they were incompatible with the Shinsengumi, then perhaps it was for the best. But was the best thing for the future of the Shinsengumi also the best thing for Hijikata? I couldn't understand. Well, I think he's the bigger picture kind of guy. After some time had passed. Oh! As I walked through a hallway, I stopped to notice something. I wonder how they landed all the way in here. Maybe they got stuck in someone's sandal. It was the time of year in which, no matter how often I had cleaned, the spring wind seemed to invite an endless flow of blossom petals. <sighs> Watching the blossom petals that were scattered across the floor without a hint of their scent, I couldn't help but remember the ache of the goodbye shared all those days ago. How was Heisuke doing? Eating meals without him was so much more quiet. It was almost as if the lanterns were out. I wondered how Saito had been doing too. At first, I had found him a little intimidating because he didn't speak often, but... After spending some time with him, I learned that he actually cares for everyone's well-being, and he had shown me bouts of tender kindness. I took for granted the fact that these men were not always going to be here. I had no idea that I would feel so lonely without them. I shook my head, stopping myself. I can't be thinking like this. There was no doubt in my mind that the other warriors had been feeling even more sadness than I was. I thought to myself that perhaps occupying my time with cleaning the compound would put my mind at ease. It was good to start with the common room. I slid the door open casually, but then I froze upon seeing the person standing on the other side. The reason being that it was... Oh, it's you, Yukimura. Takeda. My heart was startled by the creepiness of his expression. That looks like his normal expression to me. Iba has suggested to me that it was best not to find myself alone with Takeda, if at all possible. He was going to leave the Shinsengumi soon, so I didn't think he would have been in the habit of starting any conflicts on his way out, but I found him antagonistic time and time again, so I couldn't help but feel uncomfortable around him. You don't have to keep your guard up, you know. I'm not a Shinsengumi captain anymore, so I don't plan on doing anything to you. I couldn't really take him up on his word, but... It wasn't like I could just pretend he doesn't exist, so I asked him a question while keeping my wits around me. Oh, what are you doing here, Takeda? Well, I figure this will be the last time I see any of this stuff, 
so I was just standing here to soak in all the memories I've made. He looked around the compound, with a somber face, his eyes scanning slowly. Oh, I think it was spring too when we'd moved to the Nishihongwanji Temple. Back then, I never anticipated myself leaving the Shinsengumi. Takeda looked close to tears, lost in faint memory. Since there were many times that I'd had trouble with him, I had mixed feelings about his departure. But to his credit, I knew that when he came to Kyoto, he did so with a head full of dreams about the future. So he just got lost along the way. Suddenly I felt the same way I did when Saito and Heisuke left as well. It was a melancholic feeling to part with people who work beside you day in, day out. As I noticed Takeda's eyes thin, I watched as he moved with uncertainty, pacing as if he truly didn't want to leave before turning to face me. Well, I'll be on my way then. With that said, he marched on, as if he was pushing all of his feelings aside for the sake of pride. <sighs> Even though the room was empty again, I felt stuck, unable to move as I contemplated the moment. Hmm. I'm sure we'll be seeing him again. I wonder what his plans are. As evening came, I was returning to my room after having finished organizing the medicine, as was asked of me by Yamazaki. Normally around this time, one could hear the warriors talking amongst one another, happily from the common room. But now that there weren't as many warriors left, the compound was much quieter. Just then... Huh? I thought I saw a shadow at the end of the hallway, and I squinted to get a better look. Takeda, you snake. Thought you left. Is that... Takeda? He said he was leaving the compound today. Was he still here? Did he forget something? He was sort of acting suspicious. Takeda seemed to be scanning around, peeking over his shoulder as he tiptoed to make sure his footsteps weren't being heard. As he looking for the water of life, he did overhear our conversation about that. His behavior has been very peculiar, if not outright conspicuous, so I hid in the shadows and watched him. He was heading toward the very back of the compounds. Takeda did one final glance to ensure no one had been watching him and he then disappeared into the room. It was the room in which Sanem performed his research over the Furies and Water of Life. Yeah, bad news! Call for help! Only a select few of the Shinsengumi had known about what went on in that room. Takeda, of course, was not one of those select few, so technically he wasn't permitted to be in there. And doubly so now that he's not supposed to be in the Shinsengumi anymore. But why? I gulped, and I moved to the front of the room. I cracked the door open just a hair and peered in. You fool, Chizuru, call somebody! It's like a horror movie, when you tell them not to go investigate, and they do anyway. Since the sun hasn't completely set yet, I didn't see Sanin in the room. I had assumed then he was resting in another. Stop slinking around! From what I could make out, however, Takeda had been ruffling through the drawers and reading documents spread across the room. This stuff should be locked up, man. After searching for a while, he had taken a few of the documents and folded them to place inside his kimono. Chizuru, get freaking help! I would say this is enough to cover my reward. He grinned with satisfaction, then he turned to slowly walk in my direction. Oh no! Shoot, I must hide! <sighs> I rushed away from the door. Takeda sped out of the room, rushing as if he was trying to make sure he wasn't seen, and then tried to leave the compounds. Suddenly... Hello, Takeda. Were you just leaving now? Inoue approached him, and I could see them exchange a few words. Eventually, they ended their conversation, and Takeda bowed to Inoue before leaving. Chizuru, why didn't you say, Inoue, stop him! I knew something wasn't right, so I rushed over to Inoue. What do you mean you knew something right? You just saw him steal confidential documents, and you didn't say anything. Inoue, what were you talking about with Takeda just now? Uh, I was just saying goodbye to him. What's wrong? You see... <sighs> I told Inoue what I had just witnessed. Is all of what you told me true? What was he trying to do? I don't know. However, I think we should run after him and find out what he took. I think the better plan would be for Inoue to tail him and for me to go and inform somebody important to get more people to go after Takeda. Inoue gave me a grim look. I want to, but 
Unfortunately, I twisted my ankle while attending to my rounds earlier. Oh, shoot. Well, switch places then. I guess I have to track him. And I know I go inform somebody. Your ankle? Oh, no. It didn't sound like we would have been able to tell Takeda, given Inoue's condition. We need to tell Toshi what just happened. When he returns, have him deal with it. It'll be too late by then. <sighs> I guess that's the only way left, but... All of the warriors have been out at the moment, and I didn't know when they would return. Well, I guess that is a big problem. If Harada and Nagakura aren't around, we can't exactly ask them for help. What about Sana? Maybe we can go wake him up now. It's already sunset. I had known that there were numerous other responsibilities, and that it would be hard to get many people on board to follow after him. Besides, I was sure that Takedo was on high alert for people coming after him, so... I could see him being able to leave Kyoto in time before we could deal with him. So all I could do for now was... Inoue, please let the captains know as soon as they return. That I'll be running after Takeda to take care of an important matter. Yeah, I can handle him all by myself. How about if I leave a trail of breadcrumbs along the way also, for you guys to follow? Yukimura. Inoue was confused, but before he could ask... Please, I promise I'll return. I'm not running away. With that said, I ran out of the compounds. Um, I think he walked this direction. As the hues of the night sky were growing darker, it was becoming more difficult to distinguish the faces of those passing by. I was growing worried that I may lose him completely. But it'll be alright. He had literally just left the compounds, so I was sure he couldn't have gotten too far away. Or at least, this is what I had been telling myself as I began my chase. Well, he's much, much taller than you, so he's a much, much longer gait. He can even just plain walk faster. But he also might be in a hurry. Then you'd be at a severe disadvantage. This looks like the same road, but in the dark. Eventually... Oh! I finally caught sight of him, and I began running after him. Tuck it up, please wait! That's how you're gonna do this. He didn't stop. Rather, he started to jog, moving more quickly. There was no way he couldn't have heard me. He's leading you into a trap. I was starting to lose my breath, but I continued running after him. <sighs> when he had finally stopped running, he had been approaching a bridge where I noticed there weren't too many other people around. Couldn't help but notice you rush after me. I'm going to assume this isn't a normal farewell. It seemed like he was under the impression that if we were to speak alone, he would be able to get out of it, so he spoke pompously. Well, I had become winded from all the running, so my throat burned, and I couldn't string words together well enough to speak. However, Takeda didn't seem to notice a thing, and he walked toward me. Or was there something you wanted to ask me? Ask? Instinctively, I started to back up, but he was closing the distance between us. Didn't think this through, did you, Chizuru? Stop playing dumb. The Shinsengumi is keeping secrets from everyone, even the captains. And you know that secret, isn't that right? His glare locked with my eyes, and my entire body had started to freeze up. No. I couldn't let him read until my panic. I was doing my best to steady my resolve, and I suppressed my quivering voice. It's not like that. Takeda looked as if he couldn't be convinced, and he continued moving closer to me. There's no point in playing dumb. You are completely useless as a swordsman, and yet you've been appointed to a prestigious position, beyond anything you're qualified for. Not only that, Ryojun Matsumoto, was it? When that doctor visited the compound, he and you shared some peculiar conversations. You definitely know something. Takeda's face was probing me to see if I'd break, and for a second I was almost unable to say anything, but... I have no idea what you're talking about. I turned a face away from him as I said that. You should have kept eye contact when you said that. It would have been more convincing. I see you're playing dumb yet again. Then have you seen these before? Takeda spoke with scorn as he reached into his pocket to grab something. I knew it. It was the red liquid in the glass vial. <laughs> Don't drink it, Takeda. Don't do it. I gasped and Takeda smirked as if he'd won. So you do know. You know what the serum is. Do you? So Takeda did take something from Sanin's room earlier, and now it was right in front of me. If I bring this to the Ito faction, 
There's no way they'll disrespect me like all of you have. I wouldn't count on that. Answer me, Yukimura. What is this stuff? Yeah, he hasn't figured it out. I... Take it back? What? Take what back? Take the vial back or take back what I said? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. That's the option I'm supposed to take. Although this document didn't go very much into details, it did make mention of creatures whose vitality surpassed that of a human's. I tensed up under Takeda's scrutinizing gaze and guarded hostility. If any of that were true, then I'm sure there are many people who'd be interested in it, including both the Shogunate and the Satsuma Choshu side. I thought you would join the Shinsengumi because you wanted to protect the Shogunate. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use whatever's in this bottle and sell it to whoever's going to pay me most. That's when it became clear to me. I can't let this man take possession of the Water of Life. With this in mind, I used this moment of distraction while he was in the middle of his monologue. I took out my Kodachi and charged at Takeda. And what is your follow-up plan? What the... Takeda tried to parry my strike, but my movements were just a hair faster. Ah. Huh. I suppose he didn't think I'd attack him. My swing had just barely grazed over the chest of his kimono. Damn, how dare you! He had become visibly frustrated by this, and he swung his sword up to slash downwards. I watched as a blinding flash of light reflected from his blade, and it was swinging down toward me. Ah! Eva, somebody help me! I tried to block it, but my arm was gashed open, and blood spurted over the both of us. Takeda stood above me, wearing a sadistic expression as he smirked gleefully. Actually, that's a pretty sexy, sadistic smirk. The gash he just inflicted was, slowly but surely, beginning to heal itself already. Don't let him see that, he'll think it's the water of life. His face froze in surprise. Oh, no. W what the hell? Your arm? I, I know that. I just cut you. I see. So you're one of the Furies, or whatever they're called in those papers. N no, I'm... I'm a demon. Tell him you're a demon. He had no intent on listening to me, however, and he grabbed my sleeves and yanked me forward. Oh, yes, this is good. If I show others your healing ability, there will be no one who would doubt the existence of the Furies. Come with me. I'm going to use you to make a name for myself. No! I attempted to get away by pushing his hands, but then... Stop it! What are you doing? That voice! Always coming to my rescue! Iba, what are you doing here? I visited the compounds earlier, and Inoue told me the situation. Takeda, upon the sight of Iba, looked almost deflated, but his petulance grew once more. Not you again. You like being a killjoy, don't you? Let go for now, or else... Or else what? I'll do this. Iba unsheathed his sword with lightning speed, and he charged toward Takeda. <sighs> Takeda saw Iba's attack, and he parried it before the two began dueling in front of me. Their blades clashed, each swing met with a sizable force powered by seething anger. Even more slashes were sent relentlessly. God damn you. I don't like the fact that the water of life is in play here. Since Iba's skill was far above the level of Takeda's pedigree, the latter started looking out of breath as he was put into a corner. Eventually, Iba grabbed my arms and pushed me behind him to protect me from the fray. After peeking behind Iba, Takeda smirked. Oh no. Chizuru Yukimura, I heard there was a secret behind why they kept you around, but it's because of your powers, huh? And what is the secret you're talking about? Having the power to heal your wounds almost immediately. Ito was talking to me about this before, saying that the Shinsengumi holds a big secret. I'm sure it all has to do with the research being done in that musty room, right? Neither Iba nor I answered him. But it seemed like Takeda was already sure of it. He continued to talk without waiting, or even caring for that matter, about our responses. So, at this rate, the rumors of Sanin being still alive must be true as well. So, what's up with the Shinsengumi? What are they hiding? Uh, you already found it. Iba seemed unfazed as he responded. You love to let that imagination run wild, don't you? It suits you more to author cheap pamphlet literature than to be a swordsman. 
You have no intention of admitting the truth, then. Very well. He then pointed his katana toward me, and he asked Iba a question. Hachiro Iba, why are you protecting her? She's a monster. Oh, he knows I'm a girl now, huh? Iba's eyes thinned with contempt. Shut up. I speak the truth. She's a monster. Just look at her. The wound I inflicted on her arm just a second ago is already healing up. Shut up. Oh, did you not know? Then I'll show you. See for yourself. Then Takeda swung his sword again. No! I screamed, but it wasn't Iba that Takeda was swinging toward. Chizuru! I heard Iba's screams and the sound of flesh being split apart. Blood had splattered over all of us, then suddenly everything went black. Had Iba been hurt? I didn't want to believe it. I slowly cracked my eyes open. In front of me was Iba. He stood upright, with eyes bearing an expression of fury and rage, unlike anything I'd ever seen. Dark crimson blood was dripping from his sword, and next to his feet was a detached right arm, clutching a blade. Ugh! What the? It's your own fault, Takeda. Even after seeing it in front of me, my brain was having trouble processing what I was looking at. I won't allow you to harm her any further. I sensed what seemed like a near-murderous conviction throughout Iba's aura. It wasn't the Iba I had come to know. Do you still want to fight, Kandoyuse Takeda? It'll be more than your right arm next time. Y you bastard! Takeda was drenched in the blood sputtering from where his right forearm used to be. He looked like an oni, straight from hell. Never before have I swung my sword with the intent to kill someone, but... If it's you, I wouldn't have to think twice. Iba's eyes burned with righteousness, and he kept his blade pointed toward Takeda, who trembled from the loss of his limb and his pride. Grr. Takeda gritted his teeth and slowly backed off. He put his remaining left hand into his chest pocket. I guess we're about to see if the water of life grows an arm back or not. This serum. If I drink it, this injury will be nothing. As he spoke, the bottle of the water of life fell to the floor, along with the documents he'd stolen. No, the serum, the serum! He tried to bend down and pick up the bottle, but he slipped. Ugh. Into the river? Takeda! I was about to run up to help him, but Iba grabbed my arm as he scurried away indignantly. It's better if you don't get too involved. He won't last very long in his condition. It seems like the documents and potions he stole are safe and sound, though. With shaky fingers, I picked the items up and finally was able to breathe. Are you alright? I'm sure that was a little frightening. Probably more than a little frightening. How's your injury? Let me see it. <sighs> I couldn't bear to look at him, and I pulled away my arm to prevent him from seeing it. Chizuru? There was no way I could look into his eyes, so I kept facing downward. It's fine. My injury already healed. There's no reason for you to be worried. I didn't want to say it, but... And just as he said, I'm... I'm a... Monster. I just couldn't say the last part. I felt myself choke. I already know. About your powers, that is. Suddenly, my eyes widened from hearing him. Oh, come on, he was there the day with your hands getting shot. You know he knows. I looked up. I feel like there are some inconsistencies with this story. I mean, he's the one who said in our childhood that I had to hide that my wounds healed. It's been confirmed several times that he knows. There stood Iba, wearing the same kind smile that hadn't changed since we were children. You may not remember this, but... When we were little, you showed this to me, how your scars healed. Remember? I made you promise me. This power of yours was our little secret, and we made a promise to never show anyone. Oh... With this flashback, the memories that were once dim and stored in some corner of my mind became vibrantly lit once more. That's right. When I was a little girl, I made a promise. I couldn't tell any of my other friends. But if it was with him, if it was with Hachiro... I knew he was special. I knew I could tell him anything. You're not a monster. You're just you. And you are who I want to protect. You've always been and always will be. 
Eba! I felt a pang of nostalgia, and at the same time, I felt emotional knowing that I had forgotten about him this whole time. I'm so sorry. Why are you apologizing? Because you remembered me after all these years, and I... Eba lightly touched my hair. It's fine. You remember now. His words radiated with warmth, and his kindness made my heart swell. I noticed that as he ran his fingers through my hair, they trembled a bit. Eba? I looked up at him, and he bit his lip a little. Okita may have said that my sword was a lifeless one, but... This was the first time I ever had trouble controlling myself when holding a sword. Ever since Toshi and the men came to Kyoto, this is what they must have felt. To protect someone or something isn't all. There's a flip side to it. A grim reality. <sighs> I couldn't say anything, so I just hung my head. The person who had bought this realization to Iba was no one else but me. It was my fault. I don't want you to do anything dangerous. I knew that to a warrior, these words were as good as dirt. During the Ikeda Inn incident, the Hamaguri Rebellion, or any other time where the warriors had crossed swords with demons, I had felt this way during all of those battles, but this time it hit me a little differently. Because you're in love now! After a moment of silence, Eva spoke up. I want to make all your wishes come true, but... This is one that I can't promise. I had a feeling he would say that. All my life, I realized that I learned the way of the sword so I can protect those dear to me. So, if that means I must hurt others, or even take someone's life, I won't regret it. I knew he'd say that too, but even then, you couldn't blame me for making this wish. Please, don't ever let Iba hurt in battle. Just then... Hey, Hachiro, Chizuru, you guys alright? I've come to rescue you guys! <laughs> How sweet of you, but you're a little late! I heard the footsteps of the warriors approaching from afar. Why don't we head back to the compounds for now? We have to tell Toshi what happened anyways. Right. After we told our story, the men of the Shinsengumi went searching for Takeda, but... Unfortunately, there were no useful hints. He could have drifted off somewhere along the river, or died due to his injury. Or he could have left Kyoto altogether. We couldn't let our guard down, but now that he had one arm, he wouldn't be able to hold his sword. Unless he ends up with Kodo and the Water of Life really does grow arms back. The Shinsengumi concluded that, even if he were alive, he would never try to get revenge on the Shinsengumi, so they stopped their search for him. Well, I don't know about him not coming back for revenge, I think he'll pop up again. Though not quite sure in what capacity at this point yet. Yeah, we're having that conversation where Sen asks if I'm staying here for one of the men of Shinsengumi, and no, this time it's not one of them. It's someone close to them, though. No, it's not that. And this time we have to go find the others. I have to go, Shimada. I can't let you do that. The commander said to make sure I don't let you come out. Those demons are here for me. If anyone gets hurt, maybe they'll listen to me. That's why they're here, right? What if I can convince them to leave peacefully? Please, I'm begging you. Let me go. We know that they're here for me. So if I could convince them, maybe Kazuma and the others would hear me out. Shimada's brow furrowed, and his mouth drew into a tight line, but at last he sighed, shaking his head. Fine. If you're going to be that insistent, I don't think there's anything else I could do. I was told to protect you, though. So if you're going, then so am I. Is that alright with you? That'll be fine. We ran out of the house, and then I paused momentarily, unsure where to go. In this way, Yukimura. The second he said that, something passed right in front of my eyes. Hmm? His big body flew. Ugh. He flew several yards through the air, then hit the ground hard, sliding another few feet before lying still. Shimada? It all happened so quickly. I tried to run up to him, but then... Just where do you think you're going? That voice! In the same instant that I recognized his voice, I felt his arm snake around my neck to pull me in. You just can't wait for your own route, can you? Ugh. I struggled, but his grip was as immovable as steel. L 
let go of me. I heard the Yase clan visited you last night. I'm sure they got you up to speed. You are a noble demon. It is beneath you to lay in the nest full of pathetic fakes. Come with me. <sighs> it was obvious what he was referring to when he mentioned fakes. You've seen the pitiful attempts at manufacturing demons, have you not? Do you really think it necessary to help them in creating such abominations to carry out their sick agenda and self-interests? I... I... I couldn't find a response. I'm not helping make furies and trying to find my father. For obvious reasons, I wasn't necessarily in favor of the existence of furies, but... There are times when you have no other choice. Still, as an outsider, I'm in no position to say... And more than anything else, my father was the one responsible for this serum. Yeah, you don't even know anything. Don't pretend you know all of business. You don't even know anything about the Shinsugumi situation. Not the Shinsugumi, me, me. So what? Even if I were to entertain their excuses, would you be asking me to turn a blind eye? Well... Just then... Breaking into our headquarters, huh? Takes balls. That girl named Sen, or whatever you... This isn't a gathering place for demons. Fun's over, pal. Are you ready? Hey, man, I heard you were barging into our place to get yourself a wife. You think you get the point by now after all these rejections. <laughs> I guess demons are very persistent. Oh, they actually have Harada with his spear. I don't think in the old game they used to show him standing with his spear, did they? He just whipped it out of thin air whenever he went into his fighting stance. Hijikata! Harada! Behind them, I could see Yamazaki and several of the Shinsugumi soldiers. Some men were missing, though. Had they been injured by the demons? Perhaps even... killed? You fools have no idea of her worth. Well, you do better than you do, that's why they're protecting me. Demons are best fit to be with demons. She is most valuable when used by a fitting partner. Huh, so you decide to take her against her will. Just because you're too scared of the rejection you'll get from flat out asking her, huh? You're so lame and creepy. She's worthless to you as a hostage. Even if you take her as a hostage, we'd kill you regardless without any hesitation. Oh, he's not using me as a hostage. I have no intention of using her as leverage. I wouldn't have to anyway with the likes of you. The ring of men around him began to draw in. I could feel the tension build like a rope being pulled taut. Soon it would reach its breaking point. What was I going to do? We are going to decide that in the next episode because I've gone on too long here. I probably should have stopped when Shimada came to get me. <laughs> but I didn't realize I had been reading so long. I don't suppose Evil will be showing up for this. He shows up at such convenient times, you know? Which is cool. It's almost like he has a GPS tracking device on me or something. Well, anyway, hope to see you in that next episode or some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.